Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May God be with you this day as he is always. I want to encourage you, my loves. I want to encourage you with God's words. I so want you to know that he is with you. He does not want you to be troubled. He wants you to be still within your heart, knowing that he is the truth. He is the life. He is the way that you are in his hands, that he is with us at all times, through all things. He has poured out his grace upon us, that we may stand. And everyone seems to be forgetting in the world that there is power in the Lord. He is powerful. There is power in everything and there is purpose for everything under the heaven. These are God's words. There is a time for every season under heaven. Remember that someone made a song of it, but it was God's words first. Excuse my voice. I've got a sore throat. Um, Minuscule to what other people have. It just makes it awkward here. We are not to be troubled. We're not to be stirred up within ourselves. We are to be peaceful. We are to be still in ourselves, seeing what is about and seeing the truth of what is about. Not being swept away by someone's conspiracy theory here and conspiracy supposed debunk, which is just another conspiracy theory. We are to be with eyes open to remember the past. God said there is nothing new under the sun it, what happened before will happen again. We must be watching what happened before. Hamas is not new. It is not a man-made organisation of the last 50 years. That is not true. Hamas has existed since the beginning of time. Hamas is Satan. It is the workings of the hatred and the violence of Satan. There are many words in the Bible for violence. We had one English word, but in throughout the Bible there are, I don't know, it, it may have been seven, eight to ten different words in different places where we placed the word violence, but there were other words that I can't even pronounce, nor, nor will I trouble you with those words but there is one that is Hamas and when it was first spoken of it was in Genesis 6 11 I want to read this to you the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence this is the Hamas it, the earth was filled with violence this is the time before Noah it was filled with the violence of the satanic world. It was a specific type of violence. It was a, a violence that came not through justified wars or anything like that. It was a violence of unjustified, of persecution, of violence through hatred, through absolute hatred. Hatred is of Satan. It has a very big definition but just for now, I'll leave it at that. It also came about when that was the particular Hamas. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. The earth is filled with Hamas. Through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Hamas was through the whole world. It was even through the animals, because it was through them, the fallen angels. Now, the next time we hear of it is, of that particular one, is in 2 Second Samuel. The, the God of my rock, the Elohim of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield. You know who that is and the horn of my salvation 
salvation is Yeshua, Jesus Christ, my high tower, my refuge, my saviour. Thou saveth me from the Hamas. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved from Hamas. That's very important to know. The Lord tried, this is Psalms 11.5, the Lord tried, the Lord, Jehovah, the Lord tried the righteous. He tried the righteous. We are in trials and tribulation, troubles. We are in trial, just as Job was in trial. God allows us to have trials so that he can weigh us and see which side we will take. So the Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked... And him that loveth Hamas, his soul hateth. Some say God doesn't hate. God hates the soul that loves Hamas. Be careful who you support. Hamas is wickedness. It's not a justification. It is wickedness. They are described in the Bible. Now, it goes on, there are many, many instances of it and it's always to do with the workings of wickedness. But there's one spot and that's in, it's, I missed it there. It's still in Genesis, but I've, I've lost it, I'm sorry. And it was a point I'll have to, I, for some reason I didn't copy that one down. But I, it comes to me very clearly. When Sarah didn't trust the Lord's promises for a, for a child for Abram through herself, through her, she did not trust God. But she had a trusted, respected handmaiden and that, that woman she obviously trusted because a, a loving wife would not give her husband an equal wife of someone she herself did not respect. And so she gave Haggai to Abram, not because she, oh, she didn't trust the Lord. She thought, I can't possibly, she didn't know that the Lord's absolute authority over all life and so she gave Haggai to her husband to marry so that he may have a child but the moment Haggai realized she was pregnant she turned on the very woman who raised her up to a high position to be equal see Sarah did not hate Haggai she was not jealous of Haggai. But Haggai was jealous of Sarah. Jealousy is a curse. Haggai was jealous of Sarah. What jealousy does, and this particular form of jealousy, this comes with Hamas, this particular form of jealousy, it is not looking to come up. You see someone and you want to come up to the level or even higher. You don't even want that. You want to be there, but you want to destroy the one that brought you there. Your jealousy is a jealousy to destruction, not a jealousy to equality or superiority. It is to destroy. This, and at the moment that the, this first showed itself, Sarah said to her husband, I have wronged you through my wrong, me not trusting the Lord and me bringing this woman into your house. I have brought Hamas upon you, Abram. She recognized that this was that violence being brought in to the family, to the seed of Abram now had Hamas. And this spirit of Hamas persisted through into the child who then wanted to kill Isaac. Did not want to be equal or above Isaac. He had the opportunity to have 
standing in the in the community he did not want that he wanted the destruction of his brother it was hamas and that is why they were sent out it couldn't be abided within the village he was violent his name even he was he will be a violent man he was he was hamas and he went out and all the tribes that came from him carried on this same wanting to destroy to eliminate isaac and that's gone on for generation after generation there is no living with hamas but it as in the days of noah it was not only within that part of the world it was throughout the whole world and so hamas is throughout the world it is not restricted and never was restricted to one race of people one family group in the days of noah it was through all life every flesh and so it is today from every family group i don't like calling it race because we are all of the race we are there are only two races of what appear to be humans on the planet one is the seed of of adam and one is the seed of Satan. They have come in amongst us and they look like us. We, we, They came in amongst us, we didn't know. We don't know who they are and it's getting harder now. We can't even believe our eyesight. They are manipulating everything. They are lying about everything. The media, everything is programming you to, to think a certain way. Now they're programming you to think of Israel as the oppressor and Hamas as the liberator. When in fact, yes, there is things wrong with Israel. I will never tell you different. There are things wrong with Israel. They are not the perfect people, but they were chosen of God. They were placed in that place by God. Even the people that have the Quran when they read their Quran, if they ever actually read it, it says in their Quran that their God gave that to those people forever. That they are the people of that place. They are the sons of Israel and they belong there. That is their land and shall be always. But even in their own, they don't even want their own book to tell them what to do. Yet their own book is full of Hamas. It says, go out and kill them wherever you find them. That means Christians and Jews, by the way. Hamas is upon us as well because we are following the God of Isaac, of Jacob, of Abram. We are following the God of creation. And their counterfeit God wants to kill us because we refuse to turn and bow to him. And Hamas is throughout the whole world. Everywhere someone wants us to turn away from God. The world is filled with Hamas again as it was in the days of Noah. But God wants us, no matter what we are going through, hold on to this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross and bear our sins and carry our punishment upon his body to die and on the third day to rise again to everlasting life he did that for us but it was many many are called everyone was given the opportunity many were called to this banquet many were called but few were chosen. Why? Because few took up the, the, the uh, invitation. It's only those that take up the invitation that accept the gift that get to go through into the door because the gift is the door. 
If you didn't accept the gift, you can't go into the door, which is the gift. So all those that rejected it, they have no reason to complain. They were given the same gift, but they rejected it. All we can do is remind them of the gift that they may come to Christ. But at this moment, we have to believe that he is, if you believe he is Jesus, is the Christ, is the Son of God, is God with us, Emmanuel. If you believe he is Yeshua, salvation. If you believe he is the door, the life, the truth, the light. If you believe, and salvation, if you believe all of that, then you must look around you and see where Hamas is. And you must reject Hamas in all its forms. And then when you reject it, you will still your heart. Because you will be living in the Spirit of God. And no matter what befalls you, physical, emotional, spiritual, you will know that he is with you. And he will come for you at the moment that you need him. His answers may not always be the, the answer you want, but it will be the answer you need. And whether that be to life, that's a blessing. Whether it be to death, that is a blessing because you remember to live is a is a wonderful thing, but to die is a gift because we go to be in peace, in love, in, in God's presence forever. We have that blessed hope that no matter what befalls us, if we accepted the doorway and go through that doorway, what waits for us is great. So all these people around the world who are in wars, in devastation, if they have God, they are going to heaven with God. He is coming to where they are to take them home. So don't let your heart be troubled. You are in his hand. But we must be busy to bring others into his hand. By our example and our courage and our faith, we will show the world that we trust the might and the glory of God, no matter the outcome. This is something, no matter what the outcome, we still trust the Lord that he knows what is right at the moment for us because he loves us. And if we are going through something terrible, and we often do, his answer is the right one. And just just let me remind you of this. This was a song that was written a long time ago, um, and it was sung by a beautiful singer, Aled Jones, a Welsh young Welsh fellow. Um, I can't do it justice, but just so you hear the words of it, let me just, I'll try and soften my throat a bit. It's the words I want you to listen to, not, not the singing. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is He. Come bow before Him now, with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is he. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of light. Be still for the glory of the Lord 
is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him, in faith receive from him. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. We must be still. We must receive it in faith that whatever is placed before us is our blessings. Whatever is faced before us, he is with us. He is moving. His grace is with us. Through all the turmoils and troubles of life, he said, we will have troubles. We will have tribulation, but not the great tribulation. Remember, he said, I, I don't know if I've got the quote there somewhere. Oh, dear. No, I don't. But he said, we... For instance, one of the churches was going to be, it, it was a sinful church, but anyone that came out of that, they would have tribulation, yes. But he said that those that would not repent shall go into the great tribulation. He only used that once, the great tribulation. In that sentence was, they that refused to repent would be cast into the great tribulation with the wicked. Not cast into hell, cast into the great tribulation. But those that repented were not. So that means that before the great tribulation happens, some were not cast into it, had to be taken away. Again, the rapture is before the great tribulation. We will have tribulation. It is all around. Remember your history. Also remember that the, the God of Islam is not our God. The Jesus of Islam is not our Jesus. It is a counterfeit. We were warned there would be many false prophets and counterfeits. This is counterfeit. Their God calls himself... Line up the Ten Commandments. Don't lie, cheat, steal, covet, don't rape, don't do any of that wickedness. Respect your parents, all of that. Islam says you may lie. It's permissible to lie. It's permissible to kill. It's permissible to rape women. It's permissible to have children, um, have sex with your daughters, as long as they're the daughter, not of your first wife of your married wife but if you have adultery which you shouldn't have but they're allowed adultery they're allowed prostitution they call it a different name but you pay for the time of the woman to go to bed with her that's prostitution but you can also have a woman on the side don't tell your wife he tells them don't tell your wife she might get upset their, their book is sin on sin on sin and they sugarcoat it and say we're a people of peace. It tells them to kill Christians and Jews wherever they are found. The motto at the moment is from the river to the sea. It shall be free, free of Jews. They have declared it is nothing about the normal jealousy where you want to be like someone. They want rid of every every um, kingdom that came up against Israel. It was never about the land. They didn't care about the land. They left it, they left it for scrap. It was about killing every Jew. And this has never stopped. They wanted always, Haman wanted every Jew in every part of the world destroyed wiped off the face. Hitler wanted every Jew wiped off the face of the planet. He also wanted it of non-Catholic Christians. Remember, he rounded up the Bible believers. Everyone forgets that. 
what happened to the Christians in um, Assyria. They were slaughtered. That, that's in our recent history. Millions were slaughtered in our recent history and it's forgotten. Azerbaijan at the moment is slaughtering Christians and kicking them off the land. Ethiopia used to be a Christian country. There were wars in Ethiopia. Did anyone stop and see who was fighting who? It is now a totally Muslim country. We have had tribulation. It is true. We will have it. Some to a greater extent, some to a lesser. Some it's chemical tribulation. Some it's medical tribulation where the same treatment is not offered. For some of it, it is spiritual. Well, it's all spiritual. But we must remember, no matter what the tribulation, it's not the great. You don't want to go into the great. You don't want to let go of the, the Lord. You don't want to lose faith in the fact that his presence is with you. You don't want to lose faith that his glory is shining around you. That is the only reason they can see you. That's why they hate you and want to destroy you because you are shining a light in the darkness and the dark did not want it there. They wanted to keep in their dark because whenever the light shone on them, they scurry. But also the power is with you. You have the power of the Lord within you. God, God knows you. He loves you and he wants you to be still in your heart. Well, my darlings, let me just say goodbye to you. Our day is fully in swing. Um, rem it's all right, Daddy. Um, I just told him, but he's forgot. Um, God loves you. You know that. You know he came for you. You know he gave his life for you. He loves you. Keep with him. May he make his face shine upon you and give you peace, knowing that he loves you more than you can ever understand. Love one another and pray for the salvation of all people, but especially pray for Israel, not the government, but the people that they come, we pray that they come to know and understand the Lord, who is we their all God. Want to be millionaires. Well, sorry about all that interruption. Um, Dad's down feeding his bush birds now. Um, we cut up bread every day for them and he takes it down and they beautifully come in from the from the bush out, out the back there. They're beautiful to see the wild animals. But now back on to, he can't hear very well, I'm afraid, nowadays. Um, so apologies again. But I just want to remind you, just it brought something to my remembrance just as we were going out the house then. Why do we not take too much account of what people are saying around as to who did what? Who did what? Because we already know the truth. Read your Bible and it tells you what is really happening. We don't need the news media to say this and that because we know they're liars. We don't need the people of Hamas telling us because we know they're liars. We don't need the heads of Israel telling us what it is because we know they also have agendas and tend to lie. Tend to. They're not liars, but they do tend to. So technically, yes, but not on a grand scale. They're politicians. We know we cannot trust politicians. But this has never been about the land. Before the Jews came back, there was hardly a soul in the land um, Mark Twain described it as 
he would go for hours without seeing a living person and the town of Israel, uh, Jerusalem, whatever he went through, there were only scattered buildings and it was in ruin then. It was unpopulated. There were no gardens. There were no farms. There was no sign of life. When he went through, it was just a wasteland. So they didn't want the land and there weren't many people there. It wasn't until Israel came back that they wanted the land. They came back earlier in the peace and started building it up. But when they were given it in 1948, how can you be given what God already gave them? Your Bible tells you it is the land of the Israelites. The Quran tells them it is the land of the Israelites. They have not a leg to stand on for claiming any other. It's called Jerusalem. It is the uh, the Muslims even in their book say that the Al-Aqsa Mosque, that great temple on the Temple Mount, was made by Solomon. He was a Jew. Their whole Quran talks more about Israel and Jesus than about Muhammad. God loves you and wants you to know he gave you the answers. Don't be bewildered and go from one to another to another with thought of, here they're, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. Read your Bible. God tells you what is happening. It was what was going to be happening. Now it's what is happening. Put your trust in the Lord. He loves you. I love you. My dad, even though he forgets within 30 seconds, he loves you. Moment by moment, he loves you. And he's already forgotten. <laughs> so, God be with you. God be praised. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. And may you remember, be still, for the presence of the Lord is all around you. His grace is shining through you and his power is in you. God be praised. Amen.